Well, I guess my, the point of view I'm coming from is there are three major impacts of climate change. Uh, the first one is uh, sea level rise, which, depending on how you go, can be from 50 centimeters to 80 centimeters in the next 50 years. The second thing is that there's more water, obviously, in the, in the world. There's more rainfall if you take the total average rainfall. So it's, it's a misconception to talk about water scarcity. But what's happening is the water is falling in different places. So that means that we have to re-engineer the world, basically. And the third one, which you hear very little about, is the actual uh, humidity uh, that's changing, and that sh has enormous implication for agriculture. Funguses and so forth are going to be totally different. Dengue fever is going to move south and so forth. So you've got these things happening. So then you have to ask the question, well, given the world's resources, how are we going to respond? And the human nature is, well, it's not such a big problem. Maybe an Al Gore's movie, I think, is a really good example. It was a great movie, but the end last five minutes was actually totally counterproductive because he basically said that provided we get our act together and so forth, we can beat this problem. Well, it turns out the number of feedback mechanisms have kicked in, and hurricanes is one. It's like shaking a Coke bottle. If you take a Coke bottle out of the fridge, it's under pressure and cold. You don't see any bubbles. You, you warm it up, and then you open it up, and of course the Coke comes out. So when these storms go over, and, and one storm like Katrina is roughly equivalent to dropping one Hiroshima atom bomb every 200 meters, so it's, it's a huge amount of energy. So this is coming out, and if you, you can argue about the actual details, but it's an appreciable amount. Certainly if you look at and compare it with how much we can alleviate the thing, because we can't obviously suddenly change from coal to nuclear energy and renewable energy and all these things, it's impossible. So the contrast that you have in front of you, on the one hand, consumption is going up like crazy. Power generation is going up. Everything's going up exponentially. So there is no indication that that's slowing down. And then you have to ask yourself, well, with the limited resources that the world has, even in the developed countries, what's the best action? And as an engineer, I just say to myself, this is impossible to change. So the best thing I can do with the money that I have is actually to get ready for it. Then there's a lot of debate about that also. But there's actually no genuine attempt, and I think that came out in this morning's session again when I, mean, I asked the simple question. I was heartened by Europe's uh, recognition that there is a problem. I'm very heartened by the technology. In other words, we do begin to be able to predict things pretty accurately. But nobody's actually thought of the fact that in Katrina, they built a new dike, which was 170 miles long. Actually, it was 170.79 miles long. And that was a major engineering feat to build that in a year and a half. If you now take Bangladesh, the UK, and et cetera, et cetera. I mean, you're not talking about 170 miles. You're talking about thousands of kilometers of dikes and so forth. It's physically not possible. And there was a wonderful graph by somebody yesterday morning that the rate of change has actually gone in the last 10 years. So. What's happened is the rate of change is now faster than, than we're able to respond. So we're getting to the situation that we simply won't be able to respond. And so then the net effect of that is, of course, that the rich people will not be able to weather this fairly. I mean, they don't mind if the hamburger goes up to $35 or whatever. But then 80, 90 percent of the world's population don't fall into that category. And one of the illustrations of what I'm saying is that this figure that everybody trots out, two billion people don't have sanitary, sanitation, et cetera, well, that number's been around now for years, you know? It's not changing. And the reason why it's not changing is because the climate is, first of all, changing, and people are not really serious. I mean, why should an American spend all his or her resources to save somebody in Bangladesh when they're actually spending two-thirds of their net income on getting a life expectancy increase of two or three years. You know, it's human nature, it's genetic that we look after our own survival and so forth. And, and, and when you look at the actions in the world, we, we were constructed a million years ago, and we're supposed to function in this world today when information and everything is coming in so fast. We're simply, we're kind of breaking down in the response. And there's a nice analogy to all of this, actually, in the Noah's Ark. Ark. I mean, there was a problem, all the animals had to go on the ark and then they were saved. We're really getting to that same stage. I mean, we need to do some drastic action to try to overcome this challenge.